And away we go. It is the nightcap right here on BearcatJournal.com. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. As always, visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything Galactic. Get down to Dayton, Kentucky. Wednesday through Sunday, lunch and dinner. Come to pump it up. Save yourself 15%. Or go through the app. Get some delivery. They'll bring it to your house. Get your party catered. You know, get your tailgate catered if you don't want to cook. Just support Bearcat Journal and Galactic Fried Chicken. All right, let's get this thing on the road, Aaron. For the record, once I hit record, I cannot stop the record button. <laughs> we we were we were talking about the topic for tonight. When I say here we go, that means I'm clicking. Well, sometimes I talk too much. I am never going to argue that. Part of what we've talked too much about behind the scenes tonight is that we are still in an ever-evolving Bearcats landscape. And I think we all got to the point where we were annoyed with hearing about nine draft picks and how many guys are on NFL rosters. This is... This is part of why I'm annoyed that we're number 31 in the country. Right. Having only lost to a top 10 team in the country. I'm annoyed as well. I I think it's silly. Like, I think it's lazy. We talked about that a couple nights ago. I agree. But what's happening is new stars are developing for this team. And... But... You go ahead. Uh, I, I, new stars are developing. Like that was that's the natural evolution, right? Like sure. there's a lot of lose st- that many guys. A lot of snaps to be made up for. Absolutely. New stars are going to start to develop. So who are you going to lead off with? Um, that's really the, interesting. I, I found the tweet you wanted. If you want to start there. Okay, let's start with that tweet. I. I think this is where we have to start, right? Per PFF College, Cincinnati linebacker Ivan Pace is the only linebacker in the country with 80-plus total defensive grade, 90-plus run defensive grade, 80-plus pass defensive grade, 23 tackles, 17 tackles for loss, pass rush grade, 23 tackles, 7 tackles for loss or no gain, 6 total pressures, I interviewed Pete Thamel right before the season. And that comes and, cur- courtesy of Eric Galco. Yes. And Pete Thamel asked me. He, he, remember, he turned the, the, the interview on me and started asking me my opinion on Cincinnati's season. And I told Pete Thamel, I think there is a young man named Pace that is going to be Cincinnati's best defensive player. And he said, Deshaun? And I said, no, sir. Ivan Pace is going to be Cincinnati's best defensive player. And Aaron, did his position it hasn't change? been close. Did his position change? I think this week it did. I don't think that's been talked about anywhere. Well, we talked t- about it. It was touched on in the brunch. And we talked about it when I was interviewing Luke and Pace and Will Huber, Will Huber. in the post game. Mm-hmm. I think Ivan Pace is now the starting middle linebacker for Cincinnati. I feel like if I had like the the DJ like, wah, 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 like that's where like you just sign okay. all the sirens. So you know how everybody is freaking out about making a change at quarterback. For reasons I don't understand and we'll get into in a minute. Ivan Pace is now the captain of this defense. He has I'm walked in. Now. He has walked in and done this. And everybody else has gone. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're the best player on this defense. Because he's the best player on the defense. He's everywhere. He is. You remember how Perry was where he was literally in on every play? 
I don't we, think I've we joked about that with Garrett Campbell tonight on the BBP, but I don't in reference don't, to Perry. As a fan, when I was in the stands before I was even doing any of this, I knew like Perry was a scud missile. He was in on everything, right? He literally was on every play. He was either making the play or there around the play. Sure. Ivan Pace is the same. Yeah. Everywhere. You saw he shades a, of it with, with Jarrell White, but 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 Jarrell was always kind of on the weak side or at the, the sniper. He was never shades in the middle of the defense. Right. He was never running the show. And Ivan Pace has has earned. I don't even think there was anybody like this last year. Beavers was not around every play. Beavers like was was the will for the most part, and Joel was the middle. Again, Joel was not game in, game out every single game, not around. Joel every made play a like shit ton of tackles. Yes. Like this, I, this I, not, it's not a knock to, on Joel. You have to give Joel, like, Joel did exactly what was asked of him as the middle linebacker in that defense last year. This is not a knock on Joel. This is different. I think that's you would agree. Yes, I'm, I'm just putting in the caveat. Sure, like I said, I think Perry is the closest comp that I can make with what we've seen. Where you were literally, and maybe things were different because you were playing different teams at that point in time. Sure, the the American hadn't grown to where it is now. Back then, I also think there's a situation where this team needed a best player on defense. Absolutely. There was a gaping hole on defense for a leader to There's step up. There's a lot up. of really good players on yes. this defense. Van Fossen, Deshaun Pace, Jawan Briggs. Briggs, Jabari Taylor, mm-hmm. Javon Hicks. Jaquan. Think, Jaquan's Jaquan been great. Shepard has been excellent. He's been great. But there wasn't a star. And now there's a star. Ivan Pace through three games is a lock to be defensive player of the year in the American Athletic Conference. I be, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You can lock him in as defensive player of the year. I, I'm not. I'm saying through three games, he's he's certainly there's a lock. no one that has been. He's a lock for first or second conference, 100. percent Like you, there there is no bet that I would make that is him missing out, barring injury, yeah, from making. Uh, there's first nine or second games conference. Left, Aaron. What I'm saying is through three games, he's been the best defensive player in the American Athletic Conference. Okay, I'll give you that. That's what I'm saying. All right, he's up just, through just three games. Just to make sure that you didn't think he was going to be a. No, a, of course, right. like. Who knows? He sprains a high ankle sprain. He's out for two weeks. Like, of course, there's variables. There's a million variables. Through the first three weeks, I'm not taking anybody even close. Well, again, him. we go back to this tweet. I'll show it again just one more time to make sure everybody understands. No other linebacker in the country that's grading this high in every metric that you grade. What else do you want? Right. He's dominating the game defensively. And he's averaging almost eight tackles a game. Yeah. Over two tackles a loss per game and two pressures per game. He's been what else do you want? unbelievable. You know what Cincinnati also has? A great punter. They have the best special teams player in the conference, too. <laughs> a it great makes punter. Up for the Ray Guy Award? Like he's, a, he's now nominated for the Ray Guy Award. He's averaging uh, the high, at 48 yards a punt is what he's averaging, which is insane because if you think about it, he hasn't had many chances to punt long. Most of his punts have been coming from the 40, 50, 40, 50 yard line yeah. where he's catching it. Waiting but, a second or two. But it's also not going into the end zone. He's finding no, ways. No, exactly. Because we have. That's what a great punter does. Awesome gunners. We're we're the biggest hey, gunner program Je- in the country. Jeff asked you a couple weeks ago if Drew Donnelly was going to get a chance at gunner. Sure shit. <laughs> Will Paulin goes out. Trey Tucker took him off special teams a little bit. Drew Donnelly said, oh, I can be an elite gunner, sir. 
See it. Um. So I, I spoke to Will or, or Mason. Sorry, Mace. Sorry. Rake. I spoke to the rake. <laughs> In the fourth quarter of the game. And he was talking about. You told me this story on the field. The what was counted as a 67 yard punt, but was essentially a 75, almost 80 yard punt. And he was upset that because his, he had his, you know, he basically on the, it was at the five yard line, the ball was snapped. So he had his, the back of his heels, like on the edge of the end zone. And I guess Miami placed their punt returner at the 45 yard line. Because they expected him not to be able to get a big punt off. And I'll edit this. That's what you should. For content purposes. But basically, it was like, they put that bloke at the 45-yard line, and I just decided I was going to kick it straight over his bleeping head. Which, if you watch the punt, is exactly what happened. He hit that punt like a piss rocket. Like, (laughs) and the Miami returner should have just let it go. Watch the sale. He had no business trying to, like, catch it and then lose eight more yards on the back end. He did. We never, ever, 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 ever thought. Replacing Jimmy Smith would be easy. No. Mason Fletcher is that dude. He's maybe better. Chad, we were halfway through last season. We didn't think we had replaced Jimmy. Right. Not not to this caliber. Like we thought he was serviceable. We never said a bad word about. No, I mean he like, he was automatic as a freshman. Yeah, we, in terms we... of he had the same. Freshman year that Jimmy had, right? Yes. He's having maybe a better sophomore year than Jimmy had. I don't even know that that's an argument. And now we're learning both his dad and his grandpa were like Kobe Bryant (laughs) in Australian rules football. We're also learning that he's got a personality. Oh, he's phenomenal. Like, we're going to have to do more with Mace as this, this continues. All right. So we got a lot to cover here in a real short amount of time as we're already almost at 13 minutes. What other stars you got emerging? Uh, Tyler Scott, as we expected, he's always open. He's, he's so fast. He's so crisp in his routes. He's mm-hmm. so like old, just that, 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 sure. Like, he, Not literally, he gets, but... he gets what's being asked of him, and he executes it at an elite level. Charles McClellan. Chunk. None of us saw this coming. No. Nobody saw this coming. You mm-hmm. took some heat from Chuck's mom. She got mad. She got mad. Nobody is saying Chuck is not an outstanding player. He has. I, I'm calling him Chunk because he's making Chunk <laughs> because plays. Because he's making huge plays. Your question is, maybe he's not the between the tackles guy. I will say, while I, I think Kiner is more designed to be that guy, you can't, you can't deny the fact that Chunk has taken some of those in between the tackle runs and turned them in a 30 or 40 yard game. He's surprised the hell out of everyone. He's having, he's having a, I mean, we, you know, the NFL has like the comeback player of the year. I mean, yeah. he's clearly the comeback player of the year for the Cincinnati Bearcats. There's no yeah. denying that. He's having a season that we all wished he would have had two, three years ago. Right. And he's finally getting the opportunity to have that season. And but, what is happening now? He is leading the way. Kiner is getting a little bit of a ramp. To learn the system, yeah, continue he to integrate. Didn't have to be, didn't have to be thrust offense. in there, right? And now everybody gets to be fresh. Yeah, Miles is to... Miles only touched the ball I think two times this yeah. past week. 
Uh, Corey only touched the ball seven, eight times this week. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's been largely relied upon Chunk McClelland. Let's go. But I, I do want to double down and just make sure that it is known. That it wasn't wasn't that I don't see star power in Chuck. It, it's just a matter of I don't want to see him really hurt. fucking talented I, running back. I, I don't. I want to see him hurt again. I don't. I'm, I'm worried about him. Getting, uh, I don't. You know. That's fine. Just worried about him getting 20, 25 touches. If he's the guy that earns eighteen, give him eighteen. Eighteen for one hundred and one and two touchdowns, Aaron. That's where we are. <laughs> you take that every week, right? That's where we are. Um, and Ben Bryant. Let's. You're you're an Evan Prater truther. I never hid any of that. I I I love what Evan Prater is going to be for this program. Right now, Ben Bryant threw ten throws of fifteen yards or more against Miami. Some call that a splash play. Luke Fickle calls that a splash play, so I'm like, going to go with his definition. I like I like twenty. Okay, so there was like eight. <laughs> Half set. If you're moving the ball down the field aggressively, that's the point of offense, right? Like the line is blocking, the quarterback is standing there, and he's hitting open receivers down the field for 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 yards. That's offensive football in 2022, right? I guess I, I I wonder if the the general public's I don't know just acceptance of Ben as the leader is because he's so laissez faire. Quiet. He's he's not he's, laissez faire. He's just he's, quiet. He's not he's not amped on the field. He's not running around like yeah like that's, you know he's that's not Des. That's, that's, but they hated Des for a long time too. But that's where that's where I'm saying laissez faire though is you're kind of like just. And and Luke's talked about it. Like he's not the the rah rah guy. He's not no. going to be the loud guy. We've seen he's it like, even hey, in the presser. On, he's he's like, I'm quarterback talk. Let's get but done. I'm out of here. Who's he leading? He's leading Tyler Scott and Trey Tucker and and Lenny Taylor and guys that are like they respond. Even, even Martiner, we've not seen much of a personality out of Martin. Like right, all these guys are kind of chill. Kind of. You want? I'll get open. You throw me the ball. Okay, that like that's. It's not like throw me the ball, like ah, rah, rah. it's like I'm gonna do my shit. Yeah, it's not do it's your not, shit. It's it's not the you back in the '90s. You know what I mean? Like it, right, Michael Irvin and all that. Like it's, it's a little bit of a quiet it's group. Different. I think that can be fun to watch, man. Oh, aesthetically, it's pleasing. Sure, it's just if you're looking for. Somebody like the the Tiger Woods. If you're looking for the quarterback to run, the the Tom just, Brady celebration, the Cam Newton celebrations, like you're not getting any of that. But so it's it's quiet. But here's what you can get, except for Wiley. Wiley's you can quiet. get watching Tom Brady run offense because that's what Brady does, right? Picks a part of defense, sure. Sticks and sits in the pocket, finds the mismatch, finds the challenge, delivers the ball. All of a sudden, first and you know eight or second and eight becomes a seventeen yard gain. And we'll see what he does against Indiana. Indiana is going to be a little bit different than Miami or yeah. Kennesaw State. Uh, but since since Arkansas, he's thrown it to where only the receiver can make a play on the ball. He's not throwing it right. to places that are danger zones. He's not throwing it to places where, like his even his interception this week was on a tip pass, so it wasn't necessarily wasn't a great throw. We'll be fair. Also, a, also not necessarily on him. Not 100%. Yeah. No, I'm not putting it on him. I'm saying it wasn't like a perfect throw. Sure. It was the throw that the receiver had to go. He had a couple, he, he had a couple that weren't perfect throws. But but if, if the expectation is perfect, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching sports and the expectation is uh, this guy never meant like uh, our three-point shooter can't miss a shot our point guard can never miss a pass to make an assist for a basket our quarterback can never make a throw that's six inches off target come on like 
then what are you doing? You're just watching sports to be an asshole on the internet. We all have those days. Some of us more than others. That's the nightcap. We'll see you tomorrow night. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken. Right here on BearCutJournal.com. See ya!